And now we're going to change the time scale and Susan will tell us more. Thanks for joining us, Susan. Thank you for having me. Um, thank you all for coming to my presentation. Um, today we'll be discussing uh, semantic mapping of the geologic time scale. Uh, to begin, I would like to refer you all to the GitHub repository that I just linked in the chat. This repository is going to act as a reference throughout this presentation to the work that I'm discussing. Um, my hope is that by the end of this presentation, you'll have a better understanding of the processes necessary for maintaining a controlled vocabulary within data collections and what it would mean to automate this procedure. To start, I'm going to give you all a brief introduction to the geologic time scale. The geologic time scale subdivides Earth's history into a hierarchical set of time intervals based on the relative positioning of rock layers in the stratigraphic record. The most widely accepted variation, as I'm sure many of you are familiar with, is the International Commission of Stratigraphy's Chronostratigraphic Time Scale. Um, due to its vocabulary being a versatile and globally applicable temporal reference, it's used as a reference point for the majority of biological, paleontological, and geological collections worldwide. This presentation addresses my use of the chronostratigraphic time scale as a controlled vocabulary when mapping verbatim values of geologic time to the GBIF data repository. The hierar hierarchical structure of the time scale comprises ranks of increasing temporal granularity, where eon represents the largest time intervals and age is the narrowest. The upper and lower boundary of each interval is based on the relative positioning of the stratigraphic record. So for example, the Mesozoic era, which ranges from 65 to 251 million years ago, is subdivided into three periods, the Cretaceous, Jurassic, and the Triassic. Therefore, fossils in a Jurassic age formation are older relative to fossils in a Cretaceous age formation. Out of the over 1 million total records in the collection of published data sets reviewed for this project, over 6,700 were unique verbatim values for geologic timescale terms. Less than 5% were exact matches with the standardized timescale terminology, which as you can see is a mere 178 controlled values. The complete breakdown for verbatim values for each Darwin core term is available in the DWC repository, which is accessible in GitHub. Many factors contribute to high variability in published values, which is outside of the scope of this project. Mm -hmm. uh, the primary focus for this project is to develop a pragmatic and standardized process for mapping verbatim values to a controlled vocabulary in published data sets. With implications for addressing the interoperability and of published data sets through a common set of controlled values. Each term was entered into the GBIF repository within the upper or lower bound of the five classifications of the chronostratigraphic time scale. We implemented the Darwin core standardized terms as the temporal bounds for geologic time in this vocabulary, of which can be found in the GitHub repository for this presentation alongside their definitions. The first step I took in this mapping process was ensuring that each term was placed within its corresponding boundary. This problem would be a rather easy fix in an automated system as each given boundary encapsulates clearly stated values, meaning that when a value is out of place, it can quickly be moved to the boundary in which it lies. About 13% of the values in this data were misplaced and in the incorrect boundary. All data points could be mapped into one of six categories, including the terms that were an exact match to a term in the controlled vocabulary without any uncategorized outliers or inconsistencies unaccounted for. The most common category was syntax errors, with nearly 40% of the values falling into this category. These included quotation marks, capitalization, and other forms of annotation, all of which could be identified and removed through automation, along with values in languages other than that of the controlled vocabulary. Automated identification of alternate terms is based on a source vocabulary. New alternate terms will be identified and subsequently not recognized by an automated system. This requires a mechanism to identify and add to the existing alternate term source vocabulary on an ongoing permanent basis. Here, alternate terms refer to non-ICS values of geologic time. These terms make up 
26.3% of the verbatim values and include regional terms, biostratigraphic zones, and values of a higher granularity. The ICS timescale is a reference point for many specialized timescales, so I was able to relate many of these terms to where they fell within the timescale that I was working with. Taking note of terms like these and how they relate to the current controlled vocabulary is vital because it provides details that a generalized vocabulary may not be able to encapsulate. Synonyms are the only alternate terms with a direct ICS counterpart and are directly mappable to the controlled vocabulary. These made up 6.1% of the verbatim values. Once I found a synonym for a valid value, I was able to quickly identify that synonym when mapping the rest of the vocabulary. This confirms that in the event of automation, mapping synonyms, as long as they are recognized as such, would be possible. 11% of the data were erroneous values or terms that are not values of geologic time. This includes verbatim values such as recent, unknown, or any other term that does not relate specifically to geologic time. These terms were easily identifiable in a data set through automation because they do not match any values in the controlled vocabulary. Due to the variability found in the data of this repository, I found it necessary to develop a guideline to ensure consistency within the mapped data. To transform this procedure into a repeatable process via an automated system, I clearly stated how to approach every inconsistency I encountered in the data I was working with. For example, I remedied the issue of variability with rules that would ensure consistency within the valid values I was mapping. It was vital to consider to cover every matter of irregularity in as few rules as possible, one of which you can see here. This rule is in place to manage misspelled values in the data, of which some are unable to be mapped to valid values. The pragmatic guidelines for this rulemaking process make it possible to partially automate mapping procedures. The need for human verification cannot be ignored, though, and will most likely always be a part of the process to some degree. The ultimate goal is to build a comprehensive, repeatable application that is agnostic to a specific knowledge domain. These rules are fully documented with examples in the GitHub repository and are provided with both human-readable and programmatic instructions for partial automation. The repository also contains a collection of authoritative source information, extended support documentation, and web-based resources about the geologic timescale and its semantic use. Given the prevalence of issues regarding verbatim values across the community, the development of more generalized guidelines would prove uniquely advantageous for digitization activities. Thank you all. Once again, for your time and attention, and I would like to give a huge thank you to Ben Norton for his mentorship throughout this process and to Deborah for allowing me a platform to share my work. Susan, that was awesome. And I would, you know, a shout out to you and uh, sharing this with others to let everyone know Susan is an undergrad and an, she's just beginning to start grad school. So I wished I would like to say that my presentations were that polished <laughs> at the stage at which you are at. Yeah, beautiful. Um, that was really great. So thank, thank you very much. And double kudos for sharing that GitHub repository. Um, I got to be the first person to follow that. And um, I would encourage you to commit early and often to that repository. Don't worry about it being messy. Uh, the more you use that, the more feedback I think your work will get. So it was a wonderful start to uh, the project by seeing it there. Thank you. Most of the repository, I'm, I'm going to give Ben full credit for the repository in its current state. Um, I'm still familiarizing myself with GitHub. It's rather intimidating as a, as a young person to see all of that. Um, but I'm still familiarizing myself with that. So I'm going to give kudos to Ben for that one. As a slightly older young person, um, I, I think it's a great way to start your career by getting familiarized. It'll seem like second hat in just no time at all. Yeah, that's the goal is to make sure that I'm as proficient as I can be in, in these matters because this is what I want my life to look like. Well, I hope it's your experience, Susan. Mine has been that, uh, I mean, you, you choose who you ask. Most of the people I know, if I have a question about GitHub, the, the people using it are extremely friendly and happy to help you 
figure out how to navigate the GitHub space. That's very reassuring. Thank you. Yeah.